So the other day, I received a really lovely message from Christoph on Instagram. This read, Hi Andy, I just wanted to say thank you for all your amazing video content. I have watched every one of your darkness lessons. I was wondering, could you cover a video for One Way Ticket to Hell and Back with Dan's capo parts and Justin's solos? I've been trying to learn it for years and have been really struggling, but your videos are amazingly helpful and informative. Thank you so much for everything. Many thanks, Christoph. Christoph, of course, you know I'm a big fan. Let's cover this. Uh, but what do we need first of all? Well, we need a Les Paul. Uh, we need a Plexi Amp Sound. And of course, we need Cowbell. So this is Justin's part without a capo. This is a fourth fret power chord. B, B, and A in chorus. But then Dan's part is played with a capo at the second fret. And for example, for that chorus, basically uses basic open chords and I'm sure Dan might play a little bit differently to that like live whether it uses single notes or power chords more throughout but that's the kind of vibe we have the key of E major complemented by capo second fret key of D major which makes this sound like E A and B, even though we're playing D, G, and A. Kind of wild, right? Uh, and then we have a, a solo, which I'll cover a little later in the video, but let's cover everything that we've covered up to this point in the song now, starting off with Justin's parts without a capo. So the intro and verses are a B5 power chord, second fret on the uh, A string, third, or ring finger, fret four, and then a little finger playing the power chord. Uh, the octave of the root note at string three, and then three strums and a mute. I think that's really inspired by um, Highway to Hell. But what he's done is moved where it is. So it starts on beat one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And of course, changed it from there. But I think core inspiration, I think Highway to Hell. What do you think? And it's a fourth fret C sharp power chord. E5 at zero, two, and two, back to the B, and then an A5 power chord. So three, four, B, 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 three, four, one, two, three, four, E, B, and A. Pre-chorus, B, A, E, B, True ACDC fashion. I think I knew my heart was under attack. A5 power chord at the fifth fret of string three. G sharp fret four. Second fret, this is F sharp. You could do something clever like this, which is what Dan does a lot having open strings, that kind of thing. But then we basically play the first half of the I Believe in a Thing Called Love. Like, just to there. You think it's gonna go. But. It finishes off in a different way and that's how you try and get another hit, I guess. Do something the same as the first um, big hit. So it's same, same, but different. It's open, two, four, A5 power chord, four, A5 power chord, B. And then it's uh, G sharp at the fourth fret, A5 power chord, A, B, C sharp, B. Lots of slides of these power chords rather than having to jump, so that's a real trick to know about. It's very syncopated, you should be aware of it's one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and that's 
uh, a funny rhythm to get. If you struggle getting any of these power chords, like the rhythm of it, just try and play the, the root note of them. All rhythm guitarists can usually play bass really well, and Dan started off as a bass player and a drummer, I believe, so he's got those rhythm parts really down if you want to play like him. Do the same, make sure you can kind of play bass a little bit, the root notes of all these power chord riffs. But that finishes with... This is the same way it ended previously with a 4th fret power chord, A5 power chord, but then E5 up here, B, E, B. This is at the 7th fret, 9 and 9. Let's go for a full demo of that chorus and I'll put this in my looper pedal so that we can then add a capo and play over it. Here we go. Alright, that's in there, we'll save that for later. Let's have a look at this part with a capo at the second fret. So when you see Dan play this live, he starts off with a pick scrape. That's at the end of the first verse into the bridge, which is now an A5 chord. It's then G, D. Next thing I knew, my heart was under attack. I bought a one-way ticket to hell. So all of that was A, G and D. And then for one way ticket to hell, it's G, G over F sharp, E minor, or E minor 7, whatever you prefer, whatever you think is closest to what Dan does. I'm sure he changes every time. But we then have this signature riff. Which is very different to that to that, but it complements it really well. So that part is based around a D chord to an A chord, and it's string two, three, four, two, three, four, to an A power chord, doubling up the riff that the B chord plays. Then it goes G, A, B, A. G, A, B, A. Finishing with a D, A, D, A. One more time, three, four. Then we get to the solo. Dan plays the rhythm on this, so let's keep the capo at the second fret, and then I'll teach Justin solo as well. So Dan's rhythm part, B, and then this is fret four, we go four, five, three, five, four. And then back to uh, the B power chord. And then it's B, second fret, F sharp, E, 
D A A sharp. for Justin Solo, let's give this a whirl. I did that a few times. That was my best attempt. It's not perfect. Um, I'm not even 100% sure that this is how Justin Hawkins plays it, but what I hear on the record and putting this into basically C sharp minor pentatonic position one, and playing some blues scale notes in there and whatnot, uh, but we have. Just walking down this minor pentatonic. This is uh, 11 to 13. Then when, it, when we get to the root, here's the important bit. It goes one fret above, and then just where the first finger naturally is at the 10th fret. Mirroring what Dan did below. Does that twice. So this is a sitar solo put onto guitar or a guitar that used a sitar like MIDI, uh, like a MIDI guitar that might have played it in or something. But it kind of goes. Very legato playing. We got that lick. It's basically that lick later on, but with an extension. So when you get this one down, you're halfway to learning the other faster one in this. So this is 10 to 11, 8 to 9, 8, 9, 8, 9. And then a bend. With the bend. Uh, without the bend, kind of showing it the other way, how we'll do it later. Slide in up to um, the top of box two, pentatonic wise. And then these little. That's all double stops, so what's that? 11 to 12, 13 to 14. And then finishing with the longest lick and the hardest one to get. Techers. Um, so that is 12, flick off to 11, flick off to 9. All pentatonic. Go on, let's tell you the numbers to them all. Um, 12, 11. 9, 12, 9, 12, 9, 11, 9, and then uh, 11, but then, so, not, so 11, 11, I'm not following tab, sorry, 9, 11, 9, 11, 12, 10, 12, 11. 
Surprisingly, you can do a lot of that with flick offs. Do as much as it, of it as you can with flick offs is my tip for the speed there. Hopefully that helps. I'll leave some other darkness tutorials on the screen now. Any requests at all, leave them in the comments below on here or give us a message and I'll see what I can do. Take care. Bye for now.